Hey y'all, so this is my Real Housewives of Beverly Hills review. I cannot believe we are seven episodes in. Seven weeks. Um, I'm pleased with this season so far. Uh, I just know it's gonna get juicy as it goes on. So let's get into the episode. So we open up with a quick montage of what most of the ladies are doing, and then we're with Sutton, and she's picking up Erica in her new Bentley. So as they're driving, Sutton tells Erica that, yeah, this Bentley, this is my gift to myself for my, my midlife crisis slash divorce. And Erica's wondering, is she going through this? Now, unfortunately for Erica, I don't think she'll be able to get a Bentley anytime soon because her husband's assets are being frozen and her clothing and jewelry is being seized. So as they're driving down Beverly Hills, they pass this Hollywood, I'm guessing, tour bus, and one of the fans yells at them, Hey, Erica, don't divorce your husband. <laughs> fans be having some nerve, don't they? So we see that they're headed to a spa, and what is with sudden like renting out whole places? I mean, hey, if you got the money, do it. It ain't tricking if you got it, but wow, she really would just be renting out the whole space. And she is really a gift giver, isn't she? She has a care package for Erica. I mean, seeing as they're such best buddies now, it's gonna be really funny later in the season when we see Erica saying, you tell one more lie about me, I'm coming for you. Or what, or what? I can't wait for that. So we're on the topic of Erica's divorce again. And again, she's trying to paint Tom as the bad guy. And production is helping her. We get a, a replay of him talking to Lisa Vanderpump. Erica interrupted him. She's like, excuse me, Erica. I think I was talking. <laughs> I mean, something from six years ago. She's saying that Tom must be really mad at her and this divorce is gonna probably be a long one. He's not just gonna give her what she wants. She's prepared to fight in court. Next scene, we were at Crystal's house. Oh, I love her house. It's so beautiful. Her mansion. I'm assuming she's ready to do this to Sutton. All right, she's good. Go ahead, Chun-Li. <laughs> I mean, she was kicking. She was kicking. Anyway. Yeah, and I see, I like Crystal, but um, her teaching her kids how to kickbox, uh, not interesting, so I'm gonna fast forward. So now we're back with Sutton and Erica's spa day, and they're about to get into this little cryotherapy chamber. I always wanted to try this, but you know, I I'm broke. So as they're getting into the sauna, Erica's like, I had a sauna. <laughs> and then we bring up Tom again. Sutton asks her, were you mad at him that he couldn't make your Broadway debut? Erica says she was hurt, and she's saying that Tom willingly didn't come. He just couldn't make it. He didn't make the time for it. Ooh, Erica doing her best acting. You put all this financial support into someone in their Broadway debut, their wife, there's nothing left. Okay, girl, as if we don't remember last season where he was fully supporting you at that table and congratulating you and you were crying. Thank you. I, I remember that because I was like, wow, Erica's crying? I don't know. Something like, y'all, I'm still not buying it. It's just so funny she's talking about love. I mean, she's always treated him like a boss figure, you know, not like really a husband. So next scene we're with Garcelle, and we see that she's just finishing the episode of The Real. She goes in the kitchen where her housekeeper and her two sons are. She is making, her housekeeper, is making some pan-fried cauliflower. Just, just a random fact about me. I hate cauliflower. Okay, so this is kind of a best fiend's tea. It's, you know, it's just Garcelle uh, being happy with her family. We see that one of her goldfish died, the one named Kyle, unfortunately. She's having a conversation with her sons about getting married again, and you have a touching scene. Her son is like, yeah, you don't really need to get married. You have me to love. And she's like, oh, my baby. And that's it for that scene. So yeah, fast forward. So next scene we're with Erica Jane again, and she's going over to Lisa Renner's house. So as they're driving, Erica tells Lisa that she met up with Garcelle the other day. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see this scene, but we just see a flashback. And Garcella's telling her some rumors that she heard from people to Erica, and she's just wondering if she wants to clear it up. So the first rumor was someone that she saw said they saw Tom with the 60-year-old blonde woman. Erica's like, 
okay. And Garcelle was like, do you, do you think there was a third party? Erica's like, uh, not to my knowledge. And it seemed like she don't really care if there's another woman. Like, long as that money goes into her wardrobe and makeup, she good. Now the other rumors are her with other men. Like one of them I think is Taylor Swift, like ex-manager. And then the other one's her dancing with the stars partner. She's like, none of it's true. I personally think they had an arrangement from the beginning, from jump. Like, she can mess around, fool around if she wants, as long as he, like, just keeps paying her and gives her a great life. But yeah, Erica has a good poker face on right now. I'm guessing her headspace and when she was filming this was, I'm gonna throw this all on him and everybody gonna believe me. So now Lisa Renner talking about her mess and her privileged ass 19 year old daughter is going out with Scott Disick, who is pushing 40 and has three kids. I mean, I know she can't technically force her 19 year old daughter who to date, but damn, really? You really gonna allow this to happen? You can at least financially cut her off or something. You know, like, first of all, the age gap. I mean, he is twice her age, twice. When he was 19, she wasn't even born yet. Personally, I think it's disgusting, but that really does reflect on Lisa Renna more as a parent. But I'm guessing she feels she can't do anything about it. I mean, I think she's just happy that no one else is talking about her daughter's eating disorder, and now they're talking about something else. And Erica says she can't really say anything on this situation because, I mean, of her age difference with Tom. I mean, she was 28, he was 61. 61! <laughs> But at the same time, she was almost 30. This is a young girl who can't even have alcohol yet. And you have this 38-year-old man taking advantage of her. I don't know. I, I could not just stand aside as a parent and watch that happen. So the ladies' destination is a Christmas-themed store. I'm guessing they're filming in December. Uh, they're browsing, and they get a FaceTime from Kyle, inviting them to a hotel rooftop party. And they want to get together before the state of California goes into lockdown again. I can't remember if California went back into it. I know they did open earlier, though. So we're with Kyle now in this next scene, and it looks like it's going to be a family scene, so I might have to fast forward it. Yep, I'm a mother, blah, blah, blah. I love my husband, blah, blah, blah. I have four daughters. Portia has just gotten so big. Like, is she like, what, 10 or 11 now? Damn. Yeah, a lot of family stuff. I'm just gonna fast forward. So next scene we're with Dorit in her house and she just got a painting of herself, like a really large one. Now, Dorit is a narcissist, but I do gotta say this is a fire picture. Like, I think I would want something like that done for me. Next scene, we see all the ladies getting ready for Kyle's hotel event. We're with Crystal first. We get some more background on her. I love her style. It's just so chic, and it seems like she's not trying so hard like some of the other ladies. Now, a scene that kind of stood out to me is how she's telling her housekeeper, yeah, can I have a brownie? Oh, I don't eat. She definitely caught herself saying that on camera. It's like, oh, I mean, I, I, I eat too much. And she eats the brownie. Awkward. Oh, Kathy Hilton is invited. Very glad for that. We see Kyle and she's driving with Sutton. Sutton gets out that car and she looks absolutely ridiculous. She has this crunchy ass knotted black bow. Like literally this big on her chest. She looks crazy. She should have just kept wearing those sack dresses. So we in the car with Crystal and Kathy and... <laughs> Kathy is just filing her nails right now with this large yellow sponge and she's listening to Crystal. And she like, Crystal's talking, I don't even think Kathy's paying attention. She looks up and like, I've been thinking about getting long nails. And she keeps filing. The ladies arrive to the hotel and it's beautiful. It's so decadent. Beautiful rooftop, the food looks amazing. Oh man, I mean, luxury. Oh, Dorit. Dorit, that outfit, bitch. Oh my God, Louie from the neck down. Oh man, she did that. She did that. She's looking expensive. Garcelle's looking good. The makeup, flawless. Hair, flawless. I don't really like that burnt orange color, but she still looks great. 
Only in Beverly Hills is where you get to rate the outfits because these ladies come to play. Yeah, Doreen knows she looks sickening. Then we get the shoes too. It, she just knows it. She gets up, does a little spin, starts modeling the jacket. You go, bitch. I mean, just looking at Dorit and then the camera pans to Kyle and Sutton, they look like trash. So Lisa Renner walks in and she's wearing this like parachute jumpsuit, all black. It looks a little pleathery. It's okay. Erica looks great. Not as good as Dorit, but a good second place. So Rena brings up to all the ladies that her daughter's dating Scott Disick. And I mean, I'm glad Kyle said it. He's too damn old to be dating your daughter. All the women unanimously say in their confessionals that they would not allow it. <laughs> Garcelle's like, hell no. And then they ask the question to Kathy Hilton, I mean, whose daughter is Paris. She's like, you know what? It could be worse. Ha. <laughs> Yes. So the ladies are all just kikiing at dinner right now. So then the next topic at the table changes when Kathy calls Sutton kind of like a peeping Tom or something like that. And the reason she's calling her that is because she's referencing when she just barged into Crystal's room while she was naked. And I'm like, oh my God, can we please not talk about that again? Are we really about to have Crystal versus Sutton again? So basically that was Kyle that brought this whole drama up again. She said she was just filling in Kathy the details of what happened at Tahoe. Kyle brings up the Crystal that the word violated just seemed like it meant something sexual and maybe it was just hyperbole on her part. Crystal's telling Kyle that, look, I was naked and I felt uncomfortable, period. That's why I used the word violated. And she says she didn't make it sexual. Kyle is saying in her confessional that Crystal could have used any other word besides violated, embarrassed, awkward. You don't get to police how she felt in that situation, Kyle. Lord, so now Kyle really trying to get the other ladies involved in this conversation. That's a mean girl move. Oh, but Crystal is standing her ground. She's like, well, actually the word violate, it means not respecting personal space. And producers are actually putting the definition at the bottom of the screen. A disrespect of boundaries, period. Google it. All right, Crystal, stand your ground. So we didn't got five definitions of the word violate. Basically, she's trying to prove that there's nothing sexual in it. Kyle is making it sexual. So again, she reads, failure to respect someone's privacy or rights. I don't see sexual anywhere in this definition. And she's right. So now we see Garcelle sticking up for her friend Sutton saying, it has to be intention in there. Sutton did not have the intent to violate you. I don't know about that, Garcelle. It can be intentional or unintentional, actually. I mean, depends on how Crystal feels. Yeah, it looks like the ladies are really standing up for Sun right now. I mean, you have Kyle, Garcelle, as well as Erica. I agree, Doreen. I don't know why they keep talking about this. Why? I, I blame Kyle. It's really not that important at the end of the day. They said they weren't going to talk about it anymore, but Kyle was the one that brought it up. So we're doing another replay of this moment again, and we see that Sun is walking in. She knocked, but Jen just walked in. Crystal was naked. And then Sutton just keeps walking in and says, well, I don't know what you're doing in here, but I'm going to give you your coat. And it's just snickers to herself and shuts the door. Now, if I accidentally walk in on someone in the bathroom, I'm going to immediately close the door. Oh, my God, I'm sorry. But I'm definitely not going to, like, open up the bathroom, see someone in there, like, oh, you good. Give me some hand towels and then shut the door. That's a violation. What do y'all think in the comments? Like, whose side are you on? Are you on Crystal's or Sutton? I honestly think that Crystal can feel how she wants to feel about it. She didn't say anything sexual. She just said that she felt violated. And Sutton is now pissed off. And she's like, and now I'm getting angry. And I'm like, Sheree, what you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do? But no, I'm serious. Like, what are you gonna do, Sutton? You're gonna just hit her with one of your designer sack dresses? I don't know. Like, Crystal knows kickboxing, and she'll definitely whip your ass. Crystal is just talking to Sutton like she's overreacting now. Like, she said, it's the reality. That's how I feel. Deal with it. Sutton's trying to defend her actions again, and Crystal cuts her off and says, you moved a long time ago. Stop using that as an excuse. Everybody at the table just like, oop. And Sutton's like, who are you? 
I bet she can't believe someone is talking to her like this. So now Sutton is trying to hold Crystal to the cross and say, you're going to tell these women that nothing happened for me to violate you because I have a reputation on the line. You're going to tell all these women. Who does Sutton think she is? Crystal just wants Sutton to fess up that she said like something snarky as she was leaving the room. Garcelle's again sticking up for her friend. Sutton would never. Um, I didn't think Garcelle would fall for Sutton's wife's fragility, but all the women at the table are on Sutton's side. Crystal even tries to get Doree on her side, and Doree's like, well, the conversation, I don't remember it being like that. They are all gaslighting her right now. Like, what gives them the right to tell Crystal how she should feel in that moment completely naked? Is it just me? So Kathy's trying to calm the moment down between the ladies, and she's saying, you know, we all were going through a lot. We were all stressed out. I was stressed out myself. Like, I wasn't even sure if I wanted to come. But, you know, I have my sister there. I know Erica. I know Lisa. I think she forgot Dorit's name. She's like my British friend right here. Dorit says, I'm not British. My husband's British. Well, girl, you talk like you think you're from the UK. So, I don't blame Kathy for the mix-up. She forgot Dorit's name. That's what really happened. So for the moment, I thought Kathy kind of lightened the mood, but then Sutton's like, well, you know, you just got to stop saying that I violated you. And Crystal's like, well, I'm not changing the word. And I'm like, you go, girl. Don't let them all bully you. Garcelle, I am very shocked at you. So yeah, with that, it's a little awkward at the table. And Sutton's like, well, <laughs> so after Crystal says that, it gets a little awkward at the table. And all Sutton can do is just, you know, adjust that little crappy ass bow on her chest. And that's where the episode ends. Decent episode, pretty filler. I gotta say I am tired. I'm at my wit's end of Crystal versus Sutton. I want some other group dynamics or some more Erica mess. One of the two. But let me know in the comments what you think. Are you team Sutton or team Crystal? And also, do you believe Erica and everything she's saying about her divorce? With that said, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all for the next episode. Oh, and by the way, thank y'all so much for all the support. I really appreciate this. Someone sent me an article from Screen Rants that came out, I think, maybe two weeks ago, and he listed me as top 10 of Housewives reviews. Talk about flattering. I, I am so flattered, so honored. Like, my little humble ass channel, I really appreciate it. Just the recognition, and it really motivates me to do better. So, thank y'all so much for that. I just want to say that before I sound off. But yeah, y'all, I will see y'all later. Bye.